Top Med Talk. Welcome back to Top Med Talk here at Anesthesiology 2023. It's the annual meeting of the American Society of Anesthesiologists. We're here in San Francisco. It's been a fabulous meeting so far. Top Med Talk is in the exhibit hall. There is a buzz in the air and it's been very exciting. I'm Desiree Chapel. I'm your host. I'm joined by my co-host and the new co-editor-in-chief of Top Med Talk, Mike Grocott. Hello, Mike. Hello, Desiree. Yeah. And hello, our wonderful panel. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah. This is a follow-up conversation from Glasgow, the ESAIC, the European Study of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care, um, where we got to meet the group that is convening for the World Congress of Anesthesiologists 2024 coming up in Singapore in March. And so we're really, really excited to have you guys back to talk more about it because I know it's it's starting to form and really come together. So we have Dr. Wayne Morris. Wayne, thank you so much for joining us again. Welcome, Desiree. And Adrian Gelb, thank you so much. Lovely to be here. It is. We had such a great conversation last year. New to the conversation, Dr. Tony Jin. Hi, Tony. Hi. Thanks Hi. for coming. Yeah, great. Yeah, Absolutely. All right, for our listeners, if they hadn't had a chance to watch or listen to our, our previous podcast, tell us a little bit more about um, you, yourself, your practice, where you're from, and then we'll dive into the World Federation of Society of Anesthesiologists and WCA. So my name is Dr. Wayne Morris, and I'm a specialist anesthetist or anesthesiologist in Christchurch, New Zealand, <laughs> the way down in the bottom of the South Pacific. My current role is president of the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists, WFSA. And just a little bit about WFSA. WFSA's mission is to unite and empower anesthesiologists around the world to improve patient care. And this is a mission that does seem to resonate with anesthesiologists everywhere in the world and with our member societies. We currently have 134 member societies so that national societies or multinational societies. So in fact, we represent anesthesiologists in 145 countries around the world. Wow, that's fantastic. So, and, uh, you know, we're quite unique, I think, in that we're a very much a global anesthesiology family. And there really aren't many similar other medical organizations like WFSA. Yeah, that has brought everybody from around the globe together to move that forward. I love that. That's fantastic. Adrian, for our listeners, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So I'm an anesthesiologist here at the University of California, San Francisco. So this is my hometown. <laughs> Your home base, yeah. Thr thrilled to have you here. A pleasant change not having to travel a long distance <laughs> to the convention. As uh, some people may note from my accent, I uh, grew up and trained in South Africa. So I have uh, sort of an, some African origin. I lived and worked in the UK for many years. And then uh, spent probably the majority of my clinical life in Canada before moving to San Francisco. So a uh, globalist. You are a uh, in, globalist. <laughs> in, in, uh, in real terms. Yeah, that's great. We all love the fact that uh, if you get to stay close to home. So we are all, com not complaining, it's the wrong word, but coming from the East Coast over the West Coast, a little bit hard, but it's, it's nice to be in your hometown for sure. Well, and, and Dr. Jen, tell us a little bit more about yourself. I suppose I'm actually retired now, it yeah. had been years ago, but I'm originally from New Zealand. Wayne was my registrar many years ago. <laughs> and, uh, you did mention, I know, I know. So. <laughs> Tony was a very scary professor at the time. <laughs> so I worked in New Zealand, then the UK, and then Hong Kong. And in Hong Kong, I was professor and chairman of the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care for the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Um, and I was also a scientific convener for the World Congress and was held in Hong Kong in 20, 2016. Yeah, yeah. Eight years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. And then last year was the prog, or not last year, four years ago was the prog meeting that actually was virtual, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's right. And so I suppose because of some experience that I had with a in-person meeting, um, I've been brought along by Wayne to help with this WCA. I'm now one of the co-chairs of the scientific program. Wow, fantastic. We talked a little bit about WFSA, and the World Congress of Anesthesiologists is, that's their meeting, right? That is the that is their unique big meeting that brings everyone from around the world together. Correct, yes. So WFSA and the host society, in this case Singapore, oh. are co-hosting this meeting. And there are lots of international meetings on the anesthesia calendar, but I don't think there's any other meeting like the World Congress that truly is a global meeting. 
And one thing supporting that is that we will have speakers from 75 countries around oh, the world. Wow. There's, overall, there's about 500 speakers. But it's amazing to have such a breadth of speakers. And those speakers are coming from all regions of the world, from high-income countries, middle-income countries, and also countries with fewer resources or lower-income countries. It's a sort of meeting where you go along and you see people from all around the world and it's a special feeling and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's great. So I'm sure it's it's um, a challenge to get everyone there, especially from under-resourced countries. But I remember from our previous conversation, it's still really important that WFSA and, and WCA really want to bring those people to it. How does that work for you guys? Well, it is challenging. Yeah. It's, it's, it's expensive travel at the moment yeah. in, in our world, in this post-COVID world. It is, yeah. We have some incredible sponsors who are helping us to bring mainly some younger anesthesiologists to the meetings. So they will be presenting abstracts and they will be involved in the meeting in other ways. And there will be also the option for virtual attendance, um, which we are starting to see an increase in registration for now. Great. That's fantastic. Well, Adrian, tell us a little bit about what you're most excited about. I mean, I've I've heard just a little bit of uh, some some teasers, and it sounds gonna it sounds like it's gonna be fantastic. And and Dwayne, I think, has uh, led into what really excites me most is the opportunity to meet people from so many countries at one meeting. Yeah, and uh, not just speakers from seventy countries, but we're expecting attendees from a hundred to a hundred and twenty different countries. So it is an opportunity to meet people from different practices, similar practices, opportunity to make new friends, to discuss things that we have in common, and to learn from each other. And then there's some parts of the program that I am really excited about. Two of the most exciting things, in my opinion, we've asked four CEOs from major technology equipment uh, companies to do a panel on their vision for anesthesia technology in 2040. What do, what do their companies envision the pathway? What is the technology we'll be using in the next five to 10 years? So I think that is going to be absolutely riveting. And I think it'll be the sort of opportunity where people at that event, when that technology arrives in their operating room, they will say, I was there when the CEO of that company told us this was on the books and coming to us. I was ahead of you, colleague, because (laughs) I went to the World Congress of Anesthesiology. I heard it there first. (laughs) Exactly. I heard it there first. And I think that's going to be really exciting. And then the other exciting special session is the Harold Griffith Lecture. That's an eponymous and named lecture in honor of Harold Griffiths, one of the founders of the uh, organization. And there will be two incredible speakers uh, speaking about different aspects, but overlapping aspects of anesthetic practice that both touch on personal experience, patient experience, and uh, a, a broader picture on patient safety. And I think that is going to be really exciting, bringing those aspects, the personal, together with a uh, broader, more global view. So I'm really excited. And that's the Monday and the Tuesday of the meeting. That's great. Wayne, you had said there's over 500 speakers here coming to the meeting. Tony, as a convener, as someone who's head of the scientific program, that's a, a lot. But talk to us a little bit about some of the other things that we'll hear some of these speakers be talking about. I suppose we've always wanted it to be a premier scientific program so that people can come and get the best. Most anesthesiology uh, residents, even specialists, you know, they have a sort of primary subspecialty interest, and often they may have two. And what we have organized is the program into 16, 17 different tracks according to specialties, obstetrics, pediatrics, critical care, so that people can come and get you know two days of really intense excellent presentations in the area and then they can be surprised pleasantly by some gems they find in the other talks for example we're very pleased to have expert speakers like uh, Mike Krokoff <laughs> you said the nicest <laughs> I was wanting to bring Mike into the conversation I think that's a good way <laughs> Monty Mike and yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right, you didn't get where you are with <laughs> without flattering people. I, I, but I think what you're saying, I mean, my recollection of the meeting that you organised in Hong Kong is this, you, just this extraordinary menu of opportunity. And whilst you might tend to go with, you know, I, mean, I, I was into the perioperative medicine track, but there's some real gems scattered through the programme elsewhere. Yes, yeah, so there'll be nine concurrent sessions for lectures and then there'll be another six or seven rooms for workshops and problem-based learning discussions. Great. We're also going to have probably about a thousand abstracts, so we're very supportive of people trying to present their best research at the WCA. And these come from all over the world. We actually make a point of trying to encourage uh, people from low-resource countries, novice researchers, to present their work and, and essentially meet there are many of the big names in their specialty, which I hope will be a memorable experience for them. Yeah, absolutely. I'd just like to thank you sincerely for not asking me to be an abstract reviewer. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's a tough job for somebody. <laughs> That's right. I just wanted to add an, another facet of the meeting that is potentially exciting. Within that opportunity to meet colleagues is also the opportunity to convene consensus groups, oh, yes. you know, to use the meeting as a global convening opportunity. So if one has an interest in a particular area, you want to bring together people to talk about uh, education pathways or curriculum structure or technology or policy, the World Congress is a, a great place to plan those as sort of satellites out of the meeting use the expertise of the people there without actually having to convene your own meeting. So use it as, as the, uh, the, the, the fodder, if you will, uh -huh. to create your own little side meeting on a focus group. Yeah, that's a great idea. And the opportunities that that provides is huge. I also love that what you talked about and the networking opportunities and for those who are in under-resourced countries and places that they can come and maybe get support that they never knew existed because someone read their abstract. I think something like that is, those are really fantastic. And related is the opportunity to find mentors. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. it, so th that applies not just to people from low-resource settings, but people from middle-income, high-income. Yeah. And all, it, it creates a forum where you could say, gee, I wish Tony Jin would be my mentor. But how do, <laughs> how do I connect with Tony or, or Mike or, or Wayne? <laughs> you come to the World Congress right. and you have an opportunity within the yeah. scientific and social structure yeah. to say, hey, Professor Jin, your topics are topics I'm interested in. Would you be willing to uh, guide me and advise me? So another reason to utilize that global opportunity. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Well, gentlemen, let's talk a little bit about where to find more information, how to get involved. Um, if people are interested in going and need a little bit of support to do that, what's the best way to get in touch with the Congress uh, and get more information? The best place to start is the Congress web website, and I better just check the address, wca2024.com. Yeah. Alternatively, going to the WFSA website, yeah. which is wfsahq.org. Because we also want people to know more about the WFSA. We've got a lot of advocacy work going on. We've got a lot of other educational work going on. Yeah. And most importantly, we're about working with our member societies and anesthesiologists all around the world. Yeah, that's great. I just want to pick up on something that Tony said. That Please. There are up to nine concurrent sessions plus a lot of other activities. So there is a huge program. <laughs> thanks yeah. to Tony and the other members of the Scientific Program Committee. Some of the content will be live streamed oh. and simultaneously translated into Spanish, into French, into uh, Mandarin and also Japanese. All the content will also be available soon after the meeting on demand and translated into a variety of languages. Oh, so that's great. For us, accessibility is really, really important, yeah. along with a fantastic quality scientific program. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we just checked at WCA2024.org. Well, that's fantastic. So dates of the World Congress, when can we expect? Well, there's two really important dates. Okay. First is the close of early bird registration, oh, which very is important. the end of November. Okay. The other really important set of dates is the actual dates of the Congress, which yeah. are, are the 3rd to the 7th of March 2024. All right. In Singapore, 
Sure. They're excited. I'm sure it's going to be fabulous. Have you done a, a World Congress there before in Singapore? Nope. Nope. First, First time. one. First time. Great. Right. I, I, I've been going to World Congresses since 1988, uh, and there hasn't been one in no. Singapore at least since then. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, again, WCA2024.org, you can find out more about the meeting. It's a great website, lots of wonderful information, videos about previous and what to expect. So that's fantastic. And then WFSA um, HQ, that website is, is a is a, is a, is a great yeah, resource. Fantastic. Great resource as well. Gentlemen, I can't wait for the Congress coming up. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And hopefully we'll drive people there. If you want more information, you know where to find that. Um, the program, I'm sure, will be coming out. Um, as it's baked a little bit more, is that right? Oh, the f- program was up on the website all, already. All the, all the reps on already. That's right. It's program. been finalized. It's an interactive because, program. Yes. You can kind of build your own schedule and make it whatever you, yes. whatever you want. And we will be there, Desiree, to welcome anybody who wants a personal and <laughs> they can welcome. <laughs> okay, again, you heard it right here, folks. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us back here on Top Men Talk. We are really excited about this coming March and the meeting that sounds like it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So thank you to all of you guys. And thank Thank you for listening to Top Men Talk. You know you can always find us at topmedtalk.com. All our wonderful conversations from ASA Anesthesiology 2023 and previous meetings are there. And the wonderful conversation that we had back at ESAIC earlier in the summer. You can find it there as well. We're on LinkedIn. Twitter or X formerly known as Twitter. (laughs) I'm getting this right. Uh, Facebook, you can find out more information. And if you see anything you like, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up because that always helps us. So thanks to the SA. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Cheers, everybody. Top Med Talk. Thanks for downloading Top Med Talk. Don't forget to subscribe via your podcatcher. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And also, don't forget, Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EdPom, evidence-based perioptive medicine. We'd love you to find out more about that. If you check out edpom.org, you can find low prices on some of the conferences we're organizing around the world. Many of them are virtual and don't even involve you leaving your own home. Check out edpom.org now.